Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to cover the knee cut pass. It's one of my two favorite passes. Uh, it's, I feel like it's one of the most effective passes because you can use it on like guys of, uh, a lot bigger than you. Um, it's very versatile. You can hit it in a lot of different situations. It's also one of the positions I feel like there's a lot of confusion about. So I want to make the uh, purpose of this video to kind of break down uh, just the knee cut pass in general, like what it's all about and then like how you guys can start implementing it into your game, okay? So first off, uh, I just wanna talk about one of the main mistakes or uh, common mishaps I see when people are trying to work it, is that I think a lot of people view the knee cut like it's this, this one pass you can do and it's like you do it one way, right? So there's a lot of like kind of uh, confusion or disagreement, like some people like to, to do it like you grab the lapel and you drop the shin here. I think it's like a really common way people learn, like you frame in here. Some other people like are always like, you have to drop your head down low and underhook. Some people are talking like, you know, you want to control the leg and do it like this, right? And then it's like, there's kind of this disagreement about which way is the right way. The reality is, that's good. yeah, the reality is, is that uh, the knee cut pass changes drastically depending on the position you're in. How I knee cut when I'm in De La Hiba is different than how I would knee cut in like the single leg guard or like the worm guard. It's always a different thing, okay? So I just wanna cover the loose mechanics of how a knee cut pass works. And then I'm gonna give like kind of a broad overview of the different positions. And then I'll give you guys some stuff you can uh, actually implement in your next class. Okay, so uh, loosely defined, a knee cut pass, what I'm doing is I'm trapping one leg and in some way, I'm gonna get my knee pinned to the floor here and it's gonna lock his hips to facing one side towards me, okay? I'm gonna use some form of mechanics to rotate his upper body in the opposite direction. You're getting like a torque, okay? So the mechanics you use to actually rotate his upper body can change, okay? Sometimes it's pulling up this like near side elbow and like leaning this way. Sometimes it's like a cross collar grip with like the face crank, okay? Sometimes it's an underhook and just like my body weight drives his shoulder down on the other side. Sometimes it can be a cross face with the hands. Sometimes down the back, I control the hip here, okay? Um, sometimes you can even use the head. I've seen that Hamel of uh, Mahal does that a lot as well. Okay, so the mechanics you're gonna use are gonna change, but, so, but just keep in mind that that's the main premise, okay? So let's talk about like where you get to the knee cut from. Okay, so the, uh, there's two main, uh, like two main categories of the knee cut. One would be trying to implement the knee cut on the person before there's grips. And then the second one would be using the knee cut as a way to get through a common guard, okay? So like maybe like the guys here, there's no grips, right? And I want to implement my knee cut on him. Maybe I like grab the ankle here, I trap, and I drop my knee and start entering into the position, okay? Now I'm forcing the knee cut on him in the way that you might do a Toriando or something, okay? The other situation would be, maybe the guy ties me up in like the De La Hiva guard or something, right? Now it's like I'm in the De La Hiva and the knee cut is an option from here, but it's not the only thing. If I'm in De La Hiva, I could leg drag, you know, I could like reverse leg drag, you can like uh, knee smash towards the De La Hiva side. If we have different options, the knee cut is just one of those, okay? So I can trap the leg here, right? But the mechanics on how I do this is very different because it's the De La Hiva guard. So here I may underhook and do the hand post. Because I'm going with so much force, I need the hand post to catch my balance. situation is the single leg guard okay so we're here the guy sits up often they grab like the lapel they feed this out um i was watching the pan ams this past weekend samir chantra does this a lot he gets like the lapel here lucas lapri does this and the, the big danger when you're fighting here is that the guy can get a hold of my sleeve even if i have an underhook here like this if the guy gets a hold of my sleeve and he bumps me with that knee i can't post my hand for balance and now he can come up on the single leg Okay. This is also why when you're looking at like Leandro, for example, or Hadolfo a bit as well, they do what they, uh, a lot of people refer to it as active posting, right? It's not that you always active post, it's just that it's useful in certain situations. When I'm fighting in the single leg guard like this, I'm trying to keep pressure here and avoid him getting my hand. So that's why you'll see that a lot. Okay. Some
like uh, if I'm going through the knee shield, right, like I'll center the guy a little bit and I go, it's really important actually that I control this. And even if you watch Leandro here, uh, when the guy's framing on you, you won't, you won't see him active post, okay? It's not that you just active post all the time, one guy does that and someone else doesn't do it. It's the, what you do in the situation is always very particular based off of the specifics of the control the guy is doing, right? So whenever the guy's framing you, you have to grab the arm. Right? If you try to let go like this, he's going to push you away. You have to grab the arm. Another situation you might use it, uh, you can use it in like the worm guard, right? Primarily, go ahead and over it, yeah. Primarily, I would use it against like the ringworm guard is what people refer to it. I think I've heard a few different names, but basically where the guy's arm is above his leg, be it fed with the left hand, okay? In this situation here, uh, this is a really good way to set up the uh, position and you can use it to start breaking here, right? Um, I'm going to splice in some video clips of these as well. Count the weight. Uh, Count on balance. And again, try to catch the, the leg between. Knee slice. That, that pressure good. is Andrew so Hulk strong. There, is unique. It broke the grip, lapel grip. Uh, like in the regular, like worm. Going through the regular worm. Like in the regular worm, you wouldn't really use it here, right? So it's not really a useful uh, move to get out of this situation. It's more specifically for the ring worm, okay? Just because of the mechanics of the positions are different, okay? Another situation you probably wouldn't knee cut is like good at spider guard. Is like spider guard. It's really hard to knee cut in spider guard, so it's just not a useful option, okay? Um, another situation uh, that you'll see a lot of knee cut variations is reverse daily heva, okay? The guy's here, right? Usually you're controlling the top leg, right? Maybe the lapel or the hand post here, and then we're trying to find some way to break through the position and progress from here. <laughs> you guys to take away from this video is just the concept that the mechanics you're going to be using for each of these situations is different. Don't be thinking that it's this one move fits all that you're always going to do that's just going to work everywhere. You're going to have to look at different situations and different matches to understand what is going to work for that specific situation. Okay, so I want to give you guys something you can take away and implement pretty uh, quick. So we're just going to show a basic setup when there's no grips, right? So again, if I was in the single leg guard, the details I'm going to show on the finisher would not be as useful. If I was in the De La Hiva guard or the single leg, it's a little bit different, okay? We're going to talk about setting up when there's no grips. So the guy's just going to have his legs kind of down. I can control the ankles. I want to trap one leg in between. Yeah, have your hands kind of up in frame. Okay, so I'm going to trap one leg in between. So I talked about in my guard retention video, his goal is to kind of keep the elbow knee space tight, right? Well, as a passer, my job is to take away the elbow knee space. Okay, if I go around the guard, I'm trying to find a way to go in there from around, right? When you knee cut, go ahead and bring the camera a little bit closer here. You can see this gap here between the elbow and knee, right? I'm looking for that gap. I'm going to lift my foot up and shoot my knee in that hole, okay? That locks his leg behind, makes it hard for him to bring this leg back out. And now I've kind of locked the position in, okay? So this is a way of forcing my knee cut position on him. Once I'm here, I'm going to control the lapel. This guy may shield a little bit. I keep my hips strong and posture up. Okay, all I'm gonna do is I try to push this leg behind me. It can take a little bit. I can, I can switch to the knee and pull. Sometimes I can go inside with the arm. I just wanna get ahead of this leg, okay? One of the most important things to defend uh, when you're trying to knee cut is the lasso, okay? A lot of people think, go ahead and push her. When he starts framing like this, my finish is always gonna be controlling the arm here and doing some variation of leaning and posturing, okay? When the guy pushes with both arms, a lot of people think you want to get really tight to defend the lasso. The problem is if the guy's hyper flexible and I go here, yeah, they can loop over, okay? Maybe Danny can't, but if you're uh, fighting like a meow type or something, their legs are so flexible they can come over. So the key to getting around the lasso is actually posturing. I can put my hand on the floor, I can hold the back, and I lean this way. No matter how flexible he is, his leg can, if my back is here, his leg cannot come up to lasso, right? So you want to lean really far this way. I can catch my balance with my hand. I have this arm causing the rotation this way, and my lower body, once I drop in, starts to slide out and I pin the hip, right? Now he'll be pushing here. 
I secure the pass, I get my points, and then I come up on both knees and we'll switch to the finish, okay? So again, we're here, you know, we're moving around, threatening stuff, right? He's kind of tight. I lift my foot. Don't drop your shin first, right? I lift my foot up and I place my knee right there in the hole, okay? I'm gonna grab the lapel, block here, right? I start pushing this behind, I get ahead of the leg. My right hand can grab the low back, right? Can even post on the floor. I grab under the tricep here, okay? Slide through and finish. Notice, the reason these passes work so well, if you guys have watched the guard retention videos and the side escape videos, is because I'm taking away those frames early. That's what a good guard pass is. I, I'm stopping him from getting the elbow on the floor to frame my hip, and I'm locking myself in the position, okay? All right, guys. Um, so, yeah, so basically the whole, the main idea of this video was to give you guys kind of an overview of what the knee cut's about and what different ways it can look. Uh, as, as I do more videos, I'm gonna cover more in depth specifically how you might do it in De La Hiva, how you might do it in the single leg guard, and I'll try to uh, clip in uh, either my competition footage or other top level competitors. All right, guys, if you guys like the video, as always, subscribe and like. Thanks a lot.